Guys, thanks for being here. Appreciate you guys coming out to cover the team. Um, obviously, you just heard from Jalen Celestine and Grant Newell. And I'll start with Grant Newell. What an outstanding game. What an absolute outstanding game by Grant Newell. And he did it with, with skill. He did it with energy. And he did it with heart. He had a double-double in 28, 29 minutes, 10 rebounds. You, you know, when we were struggling to get a spark, it was Grant Newell coming up with a huge play, a reverse layup. You know, a shot in transition, you know. Just, I, I can't say enough about how focused Grant Newell is and what a huge part of this team he is. Jalen Celestine, um, you know, one of, our, one of our brothers in arms went, went out. Jalen Tyson went, went out with, with, uh, with something, and, and everyone on the team stepped up. Um, Jalen Celestine, we put the ball in his hands, and, and Jalen Celestine made play after play after play. He's experienced, he doesn't get rattled. He's a guy who really has great body control, and he's able to get angles to the basket where he can score with his left hand. So I was really proud of those guys. I was proud of every single player on our team. And you talk about a tough game, this is a rivalry for a reason. Stanford came out and just had our heads spinning. They were back cutting us. They were flex cutting us. They were scoring at will on certain sets. And so you got to give them a lot of credit because that's a great basketball team very well coached with great players. And, and look, this was a close game. It went our way tonight. But, but that's a really talented basketball team in Stanford. Mark, when uh, you got hired, you said this would become a tough ticket. And, and tonight you had 8,700 people here. Can you just talk about the atmosphere and how that impacted the game and your team? Yeah, we're not going to stop until we're selling this place out consistently. We're not stopping. Administration isn't stopping. The players aren't stopping. And, and we're not stopping as a staff. And we're going to continue to build this thing. The staff is always out recruiting. You saw Matt Trubinsky wasn't here. He's on an international recruiting assignment. And he's sacrificing for the betterment of the team. You know, he was able to put all of his work in earlier in the week in preparation for Stanford. But this is a staff that works. This is a staff that grinds. And you got to give a, just a huge thank you to our fans and our administration that number one, the fans for coming out, and, and then number two, administration for making this a great place to be, an unbelievable venue, and making it fun for everybody. You had a million students here tonight. What did that feel like? Well, it felt great. It, you know, you, you, had, you had students from all across campus. You know, you, you had some fraternities and sororities here. here. You, you had different clubs and groups here. You had an unbelievable turnout from the, from the uh, Cal Band, which we were invited to the, uh, to the big Cal Band gala. It was an unbelievable dinner. Hundreds of people in a big ballroom up at the International House, if I'm not mistaken. But, but the band is a huge part of this university. Just make it, get in the atmosphere to, to, to where it's, it's just a lot of fun. And so I'm just gratitude to everybody who came out, and let's continue to invite them out. Well, before I ask you about your emotions, I will ask you to make one discerning difference between Cal and Stanford, the bands. <laughs> Look. I love both bands. No, 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 no. I, I love both bands. And, and you know, I, I think, uh, you know, the Stanford band has always been, you know, it, it's, it, it's controversial in a good way. The Stanford band's going to push the envelope. I remember the story when I was there is the band leader got up on a United flight and, and made a signal, and everyone in the band went to the back right of the plane. The, the plane dipped a little bit. Well, the band got completely uh, banned from going on United at that point, you know, and, and thankfully the, there, were, there were no safety issues. But, but then the, the Cal band, it's just the energy, you, you know, the, the, the passion, just the talent, the talent when they play. I mean, it's, it's, it's phenomenal, and it's just great to see those guys. Two days ago, when you were here, you said you really hadn't gotten the emotion that you would get today. What emotions did you have today, and when did they hit? Look, there's going to be emotion. You, you know, there's emotion on both sides. Look, Jared Hosman is freshman year here at Cal. You know, I spent, I spent, I graduated from Stanford. I mean, there's emotion on both sides. There's emotion on both sides, and it's, it's. Jared and I have known each other, you know, for a long time, and he's just a great person and a great coach. And it's, and so there's, there's personal relationships. There, there's shared history on both sides, and you know, I'm sure for Jared coming into Haas Pavilion, there's emotion. And then, you know, in a month, when I go over to Maples, there's going to be even more because he spent a lot of time here, blood, sweat, and tears on the court, just like I did over there. What's some of the feedback that Jalen Tyson gave his teammates when he was not able to be out there and playing? Oh, Jalen Tyson was incredibly involved in the huddles. 
He's talking to the guys. He, he's coaching them. He's telling them what he sees in terms of you know, openings, uh, just different reads that are going to be available. He, he's, he was a second coach on the court. Um, Jalen Tyson, even though, he, even though he wasn't playing in the game, he was hugely involved in every huddle. He was hugely involved. Can you tell us how he is and what the nature of the coaching about? Yeah, that, that, that will be an update that, that we'll get to later. I, I think the medical people are still working. I, I, would, I would certainly hope that it's, it's not a long-term thing. More than a uh, let, let's wait. Let's wait and get the, get the full diagnosis. You, you had a question. Okay, yeah. So, Mark, uh, since you represent both schools, yeah. how gratifying is it for you that this conference that you love is falling apart, but you guys will be together in the ACC, and LA is the only other one that has a travel partner come with them? Yeah. So how do you feel about that? No, it's 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 upsetting and it's sad that the Pac that the Pac-12. I grew up in the Pac-10. It's upsetting and it's sad that that, that it fell apart. It's. I remember when it happened. I was upset. You know, I was upset because it's a great conference. You know, when I was coming up, it was the Thursday Saturday games, and you're going to great places. You're going to Seattle and then Pullman, Washington. You're going to Corvallis and Eugene. You're going to L.A. and you're staying there. Um, but Stanford and Cal during this process, they were joined at the hip. You know, they were working together. Um, and I'm sure as, as we move forward, I don't know the exact details, you know, Jim, Jim Nolan would know that, but I'm sure there's just going to be cooperation on the scheduling, you know, different ways to cooperate on some of those long trips. You know, I think everything's being explored. 39-39, even on the glass, Fardos, I think, was a leading rebounder the entire game. Just talk about the effort that your team showed on the glass to keep it even, because they, you know, they rebound well, too, yeah. Stanford rebounds incredibly well. Um, Fardos, AMAC, I, I can't say enough about him. We hit a drought um, where we couldn't, we couldn't throw a ball into the ocean, kind of in that late in the first half. And, and we, we gave it to Fardos on the block, and he just came through. And he just came through. He was aggressive. He wasn't settling. He was using power moves. And then he's a walking rebound. Fardos Amek is a walking rebound. It's, he's one of the best in the world, in the world at, at rebounding. You, you know, and it's, it's a skill that's going to serve him well in his professional career. No, <laughs> no, no. This this will be the one game that, that, that we do this this year. Um, it's you know I'm worried I'm gonna you know you recruit so much you, you got you got a lot of things to manage you know there's might be five extra pounds I'm worried I'm gonna split something on this suit so you got you got to get a little bit more flexibility. <laughs> so. You just have to give the players credit. I mean, you guys saw Celestine and Grant up here. They, they've Early in the season, we were turning the ball over too, more, too much. We were just, it, it was too much. It, it, was, it wasn't giving us a chance on offense. And then it, it was creating a few too many live ball turnovers when teams were just going down and scoring an uncontested basket at the other end. And so our guys have really locked in on that, where they're policing each other. A player-led team is the best team you have. You know, it, it's one thing to have a coach and a coaching staff, you know, encouraging our guys, don't turn it over, don't turn it over. But when they start doing it, when the players start policing each other, which is what we've seen with our guys on this stretch, that's when things become powerful. Now, we have to continue to do it. We can't have lapses. We can't have breakdowns. But it's been very encouraging to see. And then six guys scoring in double figures. How important is it to get other guys outside of Tyson and Cohen going further? Well, that's huge. It's huge. Um, you know, guys were called upon to, to play different positions. When, when Jalen Tyson went out, you know, early in the season, we had some injuries, we, we had some eligibility things, and so we were shuffling guys around in different positions. And that, and that was a challenge. And then tonight a little bit, we, we were forced to do it also. And guys just stepped up and embraced new positions. We were diagramming plays that we've run the whole season, but, but just putting guys in positions where they really haven't gotten too many reps, and they just responded very well. Midway through conference play, um, and then of course the regular season for that. How do you feel about your position right now? Did you think that you would be at this point, or did uh, you think you'd be at yeah, room for improvement? Uh, no, I, I thought we would have many more wins. I thought we would have many more wins. That, that was our expectation. That was our goal. We had some adversity. We had some injuries. We had some curveballs. But ultimately, it's on me. We we we've we had a, we've had a bunch of close games. And when it's all said and done, myself as the head coach, I have to be better. And it's been a lot of late nights in film. It's been a lot of, you know, meetings with the staff trying to scratch and claw and get better. I, I thought we'd have many more wins. That being said, I love our team. I love our team. 
and you know it's it's uh, we're all growing and we're all improving. But but that's that's every coach in every program. It should be every year. Mark, thank you. Yeah, thanks, guys.